Hey everybody, it's Doc Edwards from Mama's Chiropractic with a One Belly Wednesday. I want to talk to you a little bit about today how I see a newborn baby. What I'm looking for with a baby's cry is generally if they're trying to tell me if they're hungry, they're sleepy, they have upper gas, lower gas, or somehow they're uncomfortable. And once I figure that out, I go about trying to take care of the baby in a way that helps to feed their needs. So hungry, there's nothing I'm going to do about. Sleepy, there's not a lot I can do about. But if they have upper gas or lower gas, then they'll give me a specific cry. The upper gas cry from Dunstan Baby Language. You should check it out, Priscilla Dunstan. She's a genius. Um, it's basically like this, eh, 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 like I've got a, I've got a burp. Um, the other one is like an air, you know, like I got a poop. And if I can figure out one of those two cries are at the source of the issue here, then I will change how I hold a baby as I'm working with her. So very, in fact, this morning, I had a baby that we've been working with for a while. It's had a lot of spitting up issues. We determined that she has some food sensitivities in addition to the subluxations that she has. And today when her dad brought her in, what I was able to do with Bella was uh, as soon as his, you know, so she laid down, she's sitting there crying, giving me that air, air sound. I feel her tummy is super tight. So I have her laying on my arm so she can rest her belly up against my forearm and then I can take my hand and feel for where her, her what we call the hiatus hernia reflex is. You can imagine feeling up along the rib cage of a baby, right the spot where your fingers would meet, just below that, there's a little reflex point there. Now if I can feel a spasm in through there, then that spasm is a sign that there's a kind of a bubble I think of it as the esophagus passes through the big breathing muscle. Your diaphragm, it creates this little spasm in through there and I help gently traction that down and also help apply pressure along the belly. Kind of like, I had this game when I was a kid where you had this little ball bearing and you had to make it go through a maze and there were a bunch of holes that you're trying to get into for points. And I kind of picture the belly having that same kind of maze that I can wiggle around that belly and you know, get that gas bubble to come around the curves of the intestines to help them pass that and so I can apply pressure while I'm sitting there checking her for subluxations in order to help make her more comfortable. Um, pediatric chiropractors with the International Chiropractic PX Association, we get this kind of training to help figure out exactly what's going on with brand new babies. It's amazing to me that there's some corners of the planet right now where people are not really sure about whether or not it's okay to bring a baby to a chiropractor, let alone that it does something. And I'll tell you, for the for the hundreds and hundreds of parents here in, in our Southwest Florida area, I don't know what they would do without chiropractic care for their kids, and they tell me the same thing. So if you have any questions specifically about digestive issues with babies, the first thing that we think about is how's the brain talking to the body? Number two, we think about what's that gut flora look like? Number three, is there some kind of food that, that the baby's just not agreeing with? For this baby, we're looking at changing over. Her mom's having some supply issues, so we're looking at some formulas that'll be legal for her to be able to consume because she's got dairy issues and soy issues and corn issues. And so if we can find something like Cooper's recipe, which is a really good one out of Naples, um, then I think that baby's going to feel a lot better. So uh, look for us next One Belly Wednesday. Uh, this weekend coming up, I'm actually going to be a talk here locally. Uh, we have an event I call Sexy Brains, where we talk about the differences in the sexes between male brains and female brains, how that has implications for the things that we can do. At 6 o'clock, I'll be live streaming that as well. And hopefully, if you can make it in person, we can have a great conversation, date night out of it.